Dear baby 8 pound 11 ounce Jesus, please look out for Mike Gundy because even his farm animals know how dumb it is to not make any midseason moves. And although Mike Gundy is definitely not dumb, after this most recent interview, it does look like we should at least be somewhat concerned about a concussion. You are Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stop for all things cowboy and cowgirl related. My name is Cody Stovall. I want to thank you kindly for stopping by to make this your first listen. We're available on all of your podcasting platforms, visually as well on YouTube. Find me personally on the X at Old Deo State. Today, we are personally brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app today, create an account, and use the code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Get it together with Game Time today. Meanwhile, we get this whole thing together with the Mike Gundy interview that um, I obviously missed um, yesterday due to some fun stuff. But here we are now, and I did get a chance to take a gander at it, and it does have me a little bit concerned. There's a decent number of things he said in that interview that I find to be slightly concerning, right? He himself said, you know, he was full of blood, nauseated, and dizzy, which I would say typically is kind of like a concussion. Um, he said Zane Flores and Alan Bowman are both out there de- uh, fighting with Garrett Rangel, determining who the quarterback is going to be by Thursday, if that's the case. Maybe he's concussed. Him saying that there doesn't really need to be anything to change during the bye week. If he believes that, then he might be concussed. Him saying there's no need for any coaching changes. He might be concussed or drunk. I understand that they have families, but so do the Oklahoma State fan base that supports you and this phenomenal program so proudly that we're trying to raise our kids and adopt more kids to rock more and more orange. But Whatever. He also said if he can see improvements being made, then the progress is clearly going in the right direction. Then no changes need to be made. Okay, well, what improvements have been made over the last three games? Because from PFF grading, we have the worst, if not one of the worst offensive lines two years in a row. I know that we're not giving up a whole lot of sacks, so I guess that could be a calling card, although – It is slightly misleading, right, with Alan Bowman's propensity to get the ball out of his hands in under 2.7 seconds. But what improvements have you seen from the offensive line to keep Charlie Dickey? What improvements have we seen offensively to keep Casey Dunn? What have the the tight end position provided us so massively this season to make it make sense to keep Coach uh, McIndoo? And I think Tim Rattay, I like him. Right. I get it. The players like him, the recruits like him. But it would make sense if we were to potentially move on from even him. Like one of those four coaches, it made more than enough sense to make a midseason move. But he further went on to say that he has never seen a time where a midseason change would help the team. Well, I find that to be slightly a, a preposterous because how about showing the team that you're still checked in, that you're still engaged, that you're still dedicated? Like maybe sales pitch the, the guys a little bit and let them know that the 20 returning starters and almost 90% of the roster returning didn't come back for absolutely nothing. Maybe firing a coach midseason, if you have four to choose from or even five, if you want to throw in Nardo that are technically deserving, any one of those five would have been a pretty good, at least show of force to the team that, hey, I still have your back. We're going to keep fighting in this thing. Him, you know, going on to say that that uh, Garrett Rangel is, you know, out there, and from some film things, he looked better. But guys, let's let's not kid ourselves, right? Mike Gundy can shut that front door. The whole world seems to be pretty aware that he's never been, nor never will be, a massive Garrett Rangel supporter. I mean, he's an Alan Bowman guy, and that's okay. So it's not surprising that he didn't necessarily say a whole lot about Garrett Rangel, nor is it entirely surprising that he said that Bowman is out there, you know, taking reps and uh, ready to be competitive so they can name a quarterback tomorrow. But 
him talking about the national parody and the Big 12 parody is just, it's so crazy right now. It's like an NFL model. He is true. He said time and time again, this is a business. And then he also kind of went on to talk about how the fans, you know, they have a right to some degree to have complaints, but at the end of the day, it's not necessarily something that he's going to focus on, right? He talked about how, you know, your vision to the recruits is going to hurt us in the end if you're talking bad about your experience or bad about your visit or bad about this or that and the other. Okay, maybe. And he also mentioned as a parent, he says that, you know, more more or less people just need to man up and be strong. That there's no need to complain and bitch while looking for the easy way out all the time. He mentioned about people just need to stop crying about it, right? And find a way to just fix it. Instead, just help. Well, I think it's fair that a lot of us are also saying, hey, Mike Gundy, why don't you man the F up? and start doing something that shows the, the fan base or the players or the recruits that you're still actively in, in not only engaged, but you mentioned you want to have the players with some emotions, right? You were asked about if you want the players to kind of seem down a little bit. And he did mention that, yes, once you lose a game like that, it's healthy and probably a good thing to have some dejection, but he also wanted to see everyone bounce back from it. Again, what about everybody else? What about the fans, right? You know, the idiots on social media that do pay all the money for the products to get in the stadiums and wear all the hats and the jerseys and the player personnel numbers on their backs. I mean, or maybe not even that. Maybe what about the donors, right? The people who gave the bukus and bukus of dollar, dollar bills to make sure that Ollie and the O-line and, and Bowman and, BP and everybody came back. Like, what is the, the sales pitch to them? Again, I'm not obviously just berating, but for him to have a, a discussion of some sort about a lot of this stuff, to me, it raises more questions than answers. And just like if, right, what, what Mike Gundy's saying is true, that means that we're going to have the same three quarterbacks in Provo, Utah that we've had all season. You know. I would find that problematic. I know Zane, evidently his surgery is optional and that's an option that he doesn't have to take. But we're sitting here talking about people saying bad stuff on social media and, you know, stuff that's negatively impacted by recruiting. Like you do realize that there are former players and everything too, that would like to push people towards Oklahoma state, but they have, a little bit of a reservation in doing so, or at least publicly, by and large. You do realize that whenever recruits get sold, something is going to take place in Stillwater America, and part of that, I'm sure, is the cowboy culture. Then you talk about it being a business. It only makes sense that these individuals start viewing this as a business, and they want to make a positive business mindset for themselves and their future and Basically, they are an investment in themselves. So you, Mr. Mike Gundy, saying that the fans in the stands groaning and bitching and complaining just does nothing but negative stuff for the recruits. I would imagine that if you're a recruit and you see 20 returning starters and 90% of a roster buy into a locker room and believe in something wholeheartedly, and then to see this is the product that's put on the field, and then to not only lose multiple games in a row, but get absolutely destroyed more often than not in those games, followed by zero midseason coaching moves or any midseason decisions, or at least publicly, that should reinvigorate the fan base to get excited about BYU. But that just might be it. My, my gunny might uh, honestly not give 13 craps if anybody goes to Provo or not. I, I honestly. I don't know. He's made several comments about fans and social media and all this other stuff, you know, being basically a waste of time, which may be, but unfortunately podcasts are the number one source of information nowadays, especially from a news perspective. So I just don't know that this is all on the up and up. Right. And, and I don't, 
I don't know if I believe that Mike Gundy believes all this stuff either. If he does, though, again, that's why I think it's fair to get him checked out for a concussion protocol because a lot of this stuff he was saying didn't make sense. And he said more, but we'll get to some of that in a minute real quick. I do have to remind the fine folks out here, whether you're coming to Provo or headed to Stillwater, make sure that you get your tickets with the best in the land. Game time tickets is the bee's knees for anybody that is looking to get tickets. So basically, if you have ticketing needs, game time is the best place for you to stop. And it's not just on sports. They also uh, help you get rock and rolling with music, comedy, theater, and other local events near you. Game time picks takes all the crazy stuff out and gives you just the best deal. So you don't have to search for thousands of tickets and thousands of minutes and do all that. The all-in pricing is the feature that shows you the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. The seat view is panoramic, which tells you exactly what your surroundings is going to be in that seat before you buy. And, of course, the lowest price guarantee also means game time will credit you back 110% of the difference. Make sure that you take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time picks. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code locked on college, all one word, for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Make sure you create that account. Redeem that code, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-E-G-E, -E -E, for $20 off. Download game time today. Because you already know what time it is. It's game time. From uh, game time to my gunny once again. So whenever he does kind of bring up the fact that he – you know, Zane is out there with Alan Bowman competing. Surely that means that Zane is 100% ready to rock and roll because I think we would all agree it would be a little nearsighted if Zane was, in fact, physically preparing for a game that he didn't intend on playing in. Now, the idea that Garrett Rangel has to earn the job from, I guess, Alan Bowman? That doesn't make a lot of sense. I think we, we, we've seen what the Alan Bowman situation currently has been. Or perhaps Alan Bowman is out there in more of a, a helping role, right? Is that the same with Zane? Perhaps Zane is out there for sure, but perhaps it's more in a supporting role. If not, then that means they're probably good to go. Right, Justin Wright, it's been mentioned even though Mike Gundy's not going to talk about injuries, like we get that, that's pretty standard. Um, Justin Wright might make the trip. He might even see the field. I just don't know that he's going to be 100% ready to rock and roll. You know, that this idea about, he said something about Alan Bowman, just needs to work on something in the pocket or something with his body. I can't remember the, the exact thing he was saying, but that's why, again, I mentioned he might have a concussion. Um because the dude played quarterback. Matter of fact, he's arguably the greatest quarterback in the history of the Big 8 Conference. I believe he still tops and always will be, right, for Big 8 historical passing records. But his track record on picking quarterbacks has been kind of head-scratching over the years. And maybe this is just smoke and mirrors, right? Maybe this is just... Big, grand illusion. Whenever he says he doesn't think that anybody, that nothing needs to be adjusted and corrected in the bye week, again, as I said, concussion or just a little bit of a smoke and mirrors conversation. Because surely, hopefully, Mike Gundy can even realize that you can't keep producing this product. Because if you do, the end result is going to be missing a bowl game or barely getting to a bowl game or squeaking out some sort of toiletry bowl game. And for all of the positivity coming into this season, I do find it difficult, right, to accept the fact that Mike Dunney's saying that people being negative on social media and in the stands is just bad for recruiting. Or maybe what we've been doing for the last 15 years is bad for recruiting, right? Like maybe we should adjust some things, change some things, course correct some things. Because if the concern is, well, you know, parents that, disgruntled fans in the stands are going to ruin our opportunities to get recruits. You might have bigger problems on, on your hands. 
if people being uh, rude, vicious, mean, whatever on social media is going to lead to Oklahoma State getting less recruits, then, like, I mean, we're super screwed. If that is true, that a, a negative social media presence and negative fan presence in the stadium is going to equal, you know, less recruiting support, then why, why are some of the other brands not having the same problems? You know, BYU, Oklahoma State, I think on the same trajectory when this season started as far as how they build their programs. And with all the smoke and mirror show, I get some of it. You don't want BYU preparing. Let's just, let's say it's not Garrett Rengel, right? There's, there's film on Garrett Rengel. Let's say it is Zane Flores. Let's say he is going to play. Let's say he's going to start. Okay, then there's some games there for BYU to prepare for extra quarterbacks. That makes some sense. But it would be pretty difficult for them to get prepared for Milo Wake Smith as well. So if Milo Wake Smith was getting prepped for some playing time or potential playing time, uh, I don't know why you wouldn't want to kind of promote that a little bit because that would give BYU even more reasons to be confused and even more things for them to actually prep for. Well, we'll we'll see, you know, what rolls out on the field this Friday when we take on BYU and Provo, Utah. But I expect that some of this is just coach speak, but that's the difficult part in breaking down Mike Gundy is you don't know what percentage is what, right? What percentage is coach speak? What percentage is him actually just being realistic? He is good for a lot of sound bites. And I feel like that's one of the reasons that Mike Gundy is viewed so genuine because the sound bites, more often than not, are, are genuine responses that you're getting directly from Mike Gundy. But it's the deviations away from certain things that are at, at least the reluctancy, right, to kind of take the, the road less traveled as it pertains to Mike Gundy and his conversations. I believe a decent amount of this is a smoke show. Just like I, I think to some degree, not having any mix-ups on the coaching staff, a little bit of a smoke show. Then some of it I get, right? It's just about, you know, control and egotistically driven in industries led by egotistic, egotistically driven coaches. You want ego to be a part of your coaching lineage, at least to some degree, right? You wouldn't want a coach that thinks he's terrible. That probably wouldn't go over so well. but. At the same time, it's hard to grow the fan base when you're talking about how all they do is bitch and moan and complain. It's hard to get recruits to buy on whenever you're talking about a lot of the parents being weak-minded and allowing their kids to quit all the time. Now, is there a, a layer of truth in that? Absolutely. And I've said on this show countless times, I think the, the generation is significantly softer. They're allowed to get out of responsibilities significantly easier. And unfortunately, in college football, that's not going to change, right, with the new NLI rule of no, no, no more national ladders of intent, right? I think that's going to open Pandora's box even more. None, nonetheless, you know, we have some help defensively. I don't know why. That wouldn't be something much like the uh, Milo Ake Smith news potentially being something for BYU to work around, but whatever. Let me know down in the comment section. Do you believe this is a, a smoke show of some sorts? Is there portions of it that make sense to you? So on and so forth. Please let me know down in the, the comment section. Otherwise, for you fine folks out here, it's also money-making season, at least to some degree, right? You may not be a believer in the line of Oklahoma State BYU, and you may not be a believer of Oklahoma State making you money this season. I know I certainly can't can't say that I am, but I am a believer in FanDuel, and I am a believer in the NFL Cowboys that are helping us all get it done. And right now, the NFL is going to help with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. When you get that sensation inside of you that – Somebody's about to go crazy, and the game is about to completely flip. You can now check out the latest stats for you live play-by-play -play, and so much more from the same page where you place your bets from. 
You can get started with $200 back in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Make sure that you get that $200 back in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. All you have to do is visit FanDuel.com to get started today. Again, FanDuel.com. Go try to get your money up. The Cowboys maybe aren't helping you get your money up a whole lot, and neither has Brian Nardo up to this point in the season. And, yeah, the, the cross-country meets every week seemingly, I'm sure, are difficult just like I'm sure it's difficult seeing on paper how bad the defense is because the back end does leak like a sieve, even if it's predicated upon pressure from the front guys. If the front guys aren't getting pressure, and we've known this for a few weeks now, then we needed to mix it up. Maybe the rotations weren't working. Maybe it was the guys who were in the rotations maybe weren't working. Maybe it was guys needed solid playing time throughout the course of the game. Maybe there's some dudes like Ollie Gordon that, Don't really get cooking until the second half. Whatever the case may be, Nardo has not found ways, right, to move enough pieces around the board to still win ballgames. That is a massive Brian Nardo problem. And getting pressure seemingly is an issue that he doesn't know how to overcome. I would have assumed with Paul Randolph on staff, that was kind of be that would kind of be one of the dudes that was able to help Nardo learn some of that stuff. But it's okay. If we're going to give Mike Gundy grief for this bye week, we've also got to give him props for bringing in some big guns to help out Brian Nardo in the bye week. And when I say big guns, I mean like SEC-style guns. How is it going to translate? Is Brian Nardo going to be able to absorb everything or categorically Make it make sense within his play calling sheets. Is he going to have to change some of the play calls? Are we going to have to change some of the terminology that we used? Highly unlikely that we would do a whole lot of that. So it is going to be up to Brian Nardo and how he can take any of the criticism or any of the lessons or the teaching moments and get together with Coach Joe Bob and Coach Hammer and Coach Duffy and figure out you know strategic ways around some of the deficiencies. Now, what that equals, I don't know. I think it would be fair to assume maybe we get more forward down linemen. Maybe we get like a more traditional 4-3 style of set, which isn't exactly Brian Nardo's cup of taters, but 4-2-5, it's a nickel oriented with an extra you know safety style of type. Our version of the 4-2-5 slash 3-3-5 was supposed to have the Von Miller style of guy, but clearly with Colin Oliver not being in the fold, we're having a difficult time making any trans, uh, make any transitions that are beneficial to the defensive line to getting pressure. And we're clearly not being as innovative as we can in disguising things and finding new ways to get pressure because more often than not, you're seeing our dudes with their backs completely to the quarterback while the quarterback's completing passes. So that seems to be... Uh, a byproduct of Brian Nardo being in a liberal over his head. And I think when the season is spinning uncontrollably like it is now, it, it can get overwhelming. He needs to get a wrangle on that, or it ain't going to make any sense for him to be at this level, but it will be interesting to see if Brian Nardo can take some advice from certain places and find a way to make it make sense to the guys. And then also make it make sense to the guys in the headset live while the bullets are, are proverbially flying during the game. I hope Brian Nardo does, in fact, get it figured out because I do hate that statistics indicate that uh, he's not only riding in the struggle bus, but he might be driving the struggle bus. And before we do skedaddle on off of here, I, I did want to kind of round this out with one of the, the things, lastly, that caught my eye about Mike Gundy's most recent interview was he mentioned how when he talks to the team, he talks to them as if he's talking to his own sons. And while that is heartwarming, I also think that it's somewhat of a potentially cautionary tale because his son is not at Oklahoma State. His son did not get managed well at Oklahoma State. I don't think I don't think Gunner got a fair shot, just like Garrett hasn't necessarily gotten a fair shot. But he's absolutely killing it at Emporia State University. 
And so, again, if he's saying, I, I would only say this stuff like I talk to my sons, I don't know. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because his son didn't really get treated right here and he didn't really get a lot of opportunities. And I, I and he's a quarterback. So go figure that one. Once again, this is a business. Mike Gundy's talked about how they're essentially, if not already, virtually going to be employees. So instead of chastising the fans or social media or podcasts or any idiot out there that, that doesn't know anything about how those are the individuals that are responsible for recruits having a sour taste in their mouth, I would say maybe, maybe soul search a little bit more. Because although I'm sure there's corners of every fan base that have ridiculousness running amongst them, I think one of the biggest difficulties has been accountability over the last few years and taking accountability. I feel like that's where we're at at the moment. You have to accept it, embrace it, understand it to be able to fix it. It appears as though we did do all of that last season, right? And we, we saw a different midseason version of Mike Gundy, and we saw a different midseason version of the offense. And we saw more reemergent second half defense. So a, a lot of things were different between this midseason and last midseason. What isn't different is this has unfortunately started to become a little bit of a trend now. So chastising, again, anybody other than yourself or your coaching staff for the lack of recruiting or the disgruntlement uh, amongst some of the recruits in the locker room, I don't think you get that pass personally, right? Because you, you haven't really shown a lot of gusto for what the fans go through, you know? So, I don't know. Tis what it is. Anywho, I reckon that's all we're going to have for this one right here. As always, you know I love you. God bless. Go Pokes. Thank you for tuning in to make this your first listen here in Lockdown, Oklahoma State. You could be anywhere. So happy you choose to be here. Like it if you like the daggone hang. Dislike if you don't. That's okay, too. More importantly, share, comment, and subscribe. My podcast people out there, the bricks, the butter, the bread, the foundation. Hit the stars or review. Do what you do. And for everybody out there being patient, Yes, I have been in and out of doctor's offices since Friday. I did get some things resolved uh, yesterday, uh, but I've been highly medicated, so I'm trying to have guests to fill up the spots so I don't, you know, fumble over myself the whole time. So thanks for being patient, hanging in there. I appreciate you. All right, y'all. Later, my taters. <laughs>